Hey, Las Vegas, thank you for joining us again on Realty Check, your local Las Vegas real estate news show. We have a special episode for you guys today. We are doing a memorial. We are putting to rest all the things in real estate that we are likely not going to see next year. We're saying goodbye to some things that went away for good and some things that we're pretty sure are gone, have gone away for good or for quite a while. So you're going to love this show. Stay tuned. And if you guys are liking the show, following the show, please take a moment, like, comment, share it with your friends, tell people about this, and let's get started. So we have a return guest this week with us, uh, Tiana Carroll. She was actually here last week. So I was. it has been forever since I've seen you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for coming back. Well, so. thank you for having me. Uh, Tiana, just tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, my name is Tiana Carroll. I'm with Keller Williams, the Marketplace One. I'm an agent here in the Valley. I love Las Vegas and I'm always on the podcast because I love you too. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and we have Sean Marion, Sean Marion's team leader at Keller Williams, the Marketplace One. Sean, yeah. Tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Sure. So, um, actually, uh, this year got my 25 year realtor pin. Wow! Crazy Congratulations. That it's been that Woo. long. Uh, so that's really all I've known. Uh, been so been a licensed agent and realtor here in Vegas for that long. Uh, lived in Vegas for over 40 years at this point. Uh, have for the last four and a half years been the team leader or running my the Keller Williams office up in Summerlin. And so um, always uh, just keeping my, my toes in the water with knowing a little bit about what's going on out in the market, but uh, making sure that all of our agents are getting everything that they need on a daily basis as well. Awesome. Awesome. That's, uh, that's great. And, and having a team leader in an office that has experience <laughs> in real estate is really awesome. So I congratulations agree. for that. <laughs> I know you, you know your stuff and you had a pretty good referral base for, for, yeah. um, you know, for your business. Yeah, and, most definitely still, yeah. still do. It's still there just when you create the right systems and people still know how to get a hold of you. So I know you've done the same thing for yourself. So yes, actually I, I, I followed you guys in the beginning <laughs> when I, when I first started, I was like, I want to be like them when I grow up. So <laughs> yes, you. most definitely. It. Um, let's start with the, um, current, we always open the show with current inventory mm -hmm. and price reductions. What's happening right now in the Vegas real estate market. And even though this is a memorial show, we still want to tell our stats of what's happening to, um, right now. So Currently, in single-family homes in Las Vegas, we're at twenty-two seventy-one. Yeah, that's that crazy. Crazy still, low. Still a low number. Mm. I mean, it doesn't really. It. I mean, it still keeps. We we are expecting it to have come up well over three thousand. I think we hit it once or twice, but uh, yeah, that number just keeps staying low. And so yeah, it's just where where we're at. And so when you're out there looking for homes. Got to make sure you're working with a good agent to help you find your the right property right now. Right. It's crazy. It's completely unbalanced. You got to be motivated, aggressive, yes. and ready to rumble. Yeah, so, exactly right. The when, when we talk about inventory and the things that we're putting behind us, do you think inventory over three, 4,000 is something that we're probably not going to see in 2022? Oh, I'm hoping that's exactly what we see in 2022. <laughs> well, it'd be nice to get back to a balanced market. Sure. You yeah. know, that, in my opinion, that benefits everybody. Yeah. So. I, I just always have this idea that we're going to get back there. I can't imagine being in a real estate market where we were, we will forever be in a seller's market. Uh, there will be, we'll talk a little bit more down the road about our interest rates adjusting a little bit that could potentially slow some ability to buy and purchase, which could potentially see some increase in inventory. I think that there's going to be some factors that will get us back up over the three and four and hopefully even back up to the six and seven and 8,000 home range. People might not understand that that's a normal, uh, <laughs> but it is. It, that will be normal to where we have a true balanced market. And I think that there will be some things that will get us there over the next year or so. Right. And this year, like around August, when we were seeing inventory got up to like 32, 3,500 price reductions were like five and 600 people were like, mm -hmm. oh no, it's a buyer's market. I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's nowhere near a buyer's yeah, market. Close. We haven't yeah. even stepped in buyer's market range yet. Yeah. So yeah. this week we had 106 price reductions, which is nothing. No. Those are, those are probably just people that crazy overpriced, you know, and, and that, or the homes may not be attractive sure. or stinky yeah. or something like that. You <laughs> know, just right? simple price adjustments to keep that property top it's, of list. Most definitely. Yeah. And I think even just, I mean, when you only have 2,200 homes on the market, 
just the fact is you're not going to see that many price reductions. There's just not a need for it. Yeah, and right. So you're, They're moving. So yeah, that numbers and until we see the inventory increase, we're probably not going to see that number increase. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So let's get into our memorial. Are you guys ready to put some things to rest? Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. So um, unfortunately, this is going to make a lot of people very sad. But one of the first things that we have to say goodbye to is low interest rates because I don't think that we're going to be seeing much of those over 2022 with the Fed's new announcement. What do you guys, what, what do you guys feel I, about that? <laughs> Listen, I have to agree and I'm sad because that changes buyer power and I like everybody to be able to buy. I want big inventory. I want lots of buyers out everything. there. I, I want it all. Yeah. No, I do, but I think mm -hmm. it's fair and everybody deserves that right, right? So, well, yeah, I think that there's a, the biggest thing that we have to change is the misconception of things that the fact that our, our interest rates will probably be in the high threes, maybe even pushing four by the summer. It's just some, again, buyers have been spoiled for the last few years. Those numbers are ridiculously low interest rates still. Yes. Price points are a lot higher than they used to be. Just be aware of it and, and know your know what it, you need to be to have buying moving forward. Know what that rate's gonna be, know what your payment's going to be. Um, so yes, low will go away, uh, but they'll still remain somewhat low, I think, so. Yeah, still, even in the fives are low when you compare to what rates are historically. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. exactly, yeah. yeah. So most definitely, but every time when interest rates raise, there's a buyer frenzy. For sure. So we're going to have all these buyers who are like, I need to buy now before the next increase. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Call me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and maybe that'll, that'll also trigger sellers to put their home on the market to be able, because at the same point, if we do see higher interest rates, that does reduce low buying power. That affects sellers. And that can affect sellers. So that might increase seller activity as well. So there could be a balance within all of this. So it could be actually a good factor for the market. Yeah, absolutely. Our next one that we want to say goodbye to, I like to think of them as like the crazy cousin, right? So we had this like crazy cousin that was acting reckless and doing all kinds of crazy things. And we're just like, that's not going to end well. <laughs> you know, maybe we need to have an intervention. And we've seen this happening. We've seen this all unfolding. I'm sure most realtors seen it coming and then it blew up. So we are saying goodbye to Zillow offers. <laughs> we are and saying if, goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. And if you Farewell. don't, if you don't have a crazy cousin, you're the crazy cousin. Yes. So that's all. Anyway, just about that. Absolutely. <laughs> exactly. But there, are, I, yes. I mean, we're, I, I don't think many realtors are sad about saying, I don't, no. are any realtors sad about this? I don't think so. I mean, what we've seen, it's, you know, the, all the stories about what Zillow's done and it's how it's reverted back to the the instabil instability of the z of the zestimate even because they based a lot of their purchasing off of that number um so they've done away with their their buying uh platform um and yes zillow the the monster out there has moved away from this at the same point we know there's still i buyers out there so there yeah. are still yeah. opportunities for that and if, for those realtors watching talk to your clients, make sure you know what they want to do because they they will still be talking to the other companies out there. But I think it's nice to see that uh, Zillow has maybe stepped away from the, from the platform. Yeah, it's really sad to see them go <laughs> and have to eat all that crow. That's a shame. For sure. <laughs> that is definitely a Poor shame. Zillow but they'll, Zillow. they'll be missed. Can we say goodbye to Zestimates? Yeah. I mean, you know, like that was... <laughs> I wish. <laughs> well, I yeah. know that that's going to happen. They're not going away. <laughs> no, they're, they're not. And they're still ridiculous. We were literally sitting on the couch last night and my wife said, um, you know what our estimate is? And it's just ridiculously high. So it's, it's just be, just be cautious of those estimates still. Oh, oh of course. Oh, of course. <laughs> All day, it, every it's day. like, those are, those are magical numbers. Sometimes they're really high. Sometimes they're low. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while they get lucky and they're on target and you're For like, sure. wow, that was a good one. Yeah. But, what did they do there? Yeah. <laughs> How'd that happen? You occasionally they get lucky. the other ones? Yeah. yeah. So, um, so yes, yeah, Zillow offers has gone away, mm -hmm. but Zestimates are still here. Yes, so correct. they are. Let's, let's put some hopes in for next year. For sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> add that to the wish Maybe, list. Yeah. We'll 
we'll add that to the wish list. Maybe there's something something we can do to make those go away too. Or maybe Zillow's resolution for the new year will be like, hey, let's be more accurate. Yeah. <laughs> that would be nice, that right? Be, Give it a nice. go, Zillow. Try. Yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, that's okay. They can just they, they can just keep on. They've they've kind of proved themselves right now. So we're 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 yeah. good. Just keep on going at it. Um High unemployment. We're happy to say goodbye to this mm -hmm. because a lot of people are getting back to work right now. All of the shutdowns are pretty much opening back up. We're hoping they stay open. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's um that's that's all up in the air right now. You know this new variant going around, so that's not uh not a good thing, but so far, um, most people are getting mm -hmm. back to work. So those unemployment numbers are starting to go down and yeah. the city's uh, back to work. Yeah. yeah. And it's nice, right? Mm -hmm. I think we need that. Most definitely. I mean, it's been a, I mean, the beginning of this year, it was just, I mean, obviously things starting to open back up, but when you would go into a restaurant, a hotel, anything, you know, any place really, and you'd see lack of people working. I mean, you still see the signs. <laughs> Saw one at Starbucks yesterday. The, we're short staff, so be nice to the ones that showed up. Right. You know, so it's we have to think that mentality, and I think we are seeing more people going back to work. The unemployment side of it, that uh, those extra uh, stimulus checks, I think, are, are have waned waned down. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we'll see some good low unemployment numbers, which is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. that's really great. That is that is great. And, and, and of course, for, as it relates to real estate, you know, some of our buyers couldn't buy for because sure. they were in this like furlough or mm -hmm. whatever the, the period where they, you know, were just not back to work because the company wasn't fully staffed again. Yeah. So now they're getting back to work. They're getting those paychecks. They're being able to yeah. go into those purchases now. So that's yeah. good. And that not to sound exciting. like a broken record, but again, every little thing even affects the seller if they weren't selling their home because one of the spouses wasn't working and they Absolutely. didn't know where they could go or couldn't move up to that next home, that gives sellers an opportunity to list their home now right. at this point. So we hopefully, again, we'll continue to see an increase in inventory. Yep. And if you went back to work in the same field and the same um, company even mm -hmm. that you were at before, even those gaps, a lot of lenders, you know, are just asking for letters and things yep. to right. compensate for that. But they're working right. with you on it because they understand... Yeah. What happened was out of everybody's control. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So another thing, this is this is double ended. Some people are saying completely goodbye to work commutes because they're mm -hmm. all online and all virtual. Their company was like, this works for us. They don't have to drive to work anymore. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Lower overhead for the company. Yeah. Some of them for are sure. sticking with it. Yeah, they've downsized their workspace, uh, you know, working with getting people having that full opportunity to work, uh, you know, virtually, uh, it's been a benefit. I know that's benefited a lot of people. I mean, I know yes. there's a, a lot of, a lot of stay at home parents that it's been, especially going through everything in COVID. It was Is that really a benefit. No, I'm just kidding. Well, yes and no. I mean, it depends on the individual situation, but, um, the kids, it depends yeah, on the kids. It, exactly yeah. right. You know, and at the same point, it's just been, it's, you know, you're seeing companies moving into smaller space. You're seeing those people that have been able to, uh, move that are they're moving to Las Vegas that are still maintaining their jobs in other parts of the country because again they have that ability to telecommute and work uh, work virtually so it's uh, it, I think that that is not going to slow down I think we're going to continue to see that I think companies will continue to downsize space if they have that opportunity to do so so that's going to be more working from home for sure. Absolutely. And I am so glad to say goodbye to remote learning. Oh my gosh, I'm a realtor, not yeah. a teacher. Like that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that, never, ever bring that back again, please. Yeah. That was, I no. Pray that for was, our kids. No. Well, and that's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. We're going to have had to learn that way. I was we praise not. you teachers that have been doing this. We absolutely we, do. But at we the same point, do. it's, uh, yeah, we're, we didn't get our teaching degree. So. Yes, I was not, I was not wired to teach children. <laughs> no. That did not, that did not work well. I was telling my kids, you're on your own. I'm sorry. Yeah. But. but yeah, like we were saying, <laughs> Good the flip, luck. Yeah. but you said the flip side of that, we are seeing more people that are, their work's going to have them start coming back to work now. Yes. So the handful of people that, uh, you know, that were working, you know, maybe they still have that opportunity, but I know a lot of companies yeah. will say, all right, time to get your butt back in the office and uh, make sure that that's, 
that they're hitting their numbers or whatever it is they're in their work that they do. So yeah, so some people are very very sad about saying <laughs> goodbye yes. to the virtual um, virtual remote working. Yeah, for so. sure. Right. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, and and with that separate home and office, you know, again, mm -hmm. double edged. Some people are saying goodbye completely to having a separate office space and mm -hmm. a separate home space and. And those, uh, those have affected us a lot in this last year. The people that have ditched that and have gone 100% remote um, working have had to, like, change their living environment. You know, those, mm -hmm. those right. all-in-one uh, minimalist houses <laughs> aren't really a good idea anymore. Sure. <laughs> well, listen, there's something to be said for the TikTok closet home office, right? <laughs> so it does give you the ability to have that space. But yes, people are now wanting a separate space because it becomes overwhelming, the same space to do mm -hmm. everything um, from. So. Yeah, I think it's uh, an aspect of it is as in, as realtors, it's very comfortable for us to work from home. And for the longest time I did, and I saw it as for a long, I saw it as a negative to be very honest with you, just because there wasn't the ability to separate work from home life. Right. Work was always right down there at the end of the hall. It's, it was easy to go and work until 11 o'clock at night and get up at seven in the morning and be right at work yeah. and not have that separation. And it's, you know, so the value of being able to go into the office and separate and leave and clock out in a way and go home and not think about work so much, there's a, there's a value to that. And I think a lot of people are going to have to learn how to do that if they're going to maintain the at work uh, telecommuting. So right. it makes right. sure that there's that happy balance there. Right. But I think it also gives people the opportunity to create the life that they want, right? For sure. Working from home is amazing for some people. It they is. excel yeah. at it. And other people like the office environment. And now mm -hmm. we're in a world where both are accessible. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly both are, right. both are off. And, and that is, there's, I, I mean, if you are, if your job's going back to work and you're like, no, no, I love this like home working scenario, I'm sure right. you'll find another company out there that's sure. offering it. Yeah. So there's definitely, we have a new, um, a whole new <laughs> system of how things are right now. So me per, um, personally, I hated working from home. I mean, my dog would be barking and like <laughs> yeah. there's all yeah. kinds of stuff. I'm like, I just can't focus on yeah. anything. Exactly I've been, right. you know, I was, I was back at the office when the office was a ghost town and mm -hmm. no one was in there. I was still, I was still there. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. it's like, yeah, working from home did not, um, it just, it just didn't work out for me. And, you know, just gives you, for, for me, it just gave me the like, Oh, I could actually like be in my pajamas all day. Like for sure, yeah. There's a <laughs> so, lot of aspects to it. Yeah, and I like working from anywhere. I yeah. can be on a park bench or in a Starbucks or mm -hmm. in the office at my house. Like, yeah, yeah. I and like I, the variety. It gives yeah. Me. Well, I I see that. I mean, I think that if you, and I feel it's that ability that that ability to step away from your home life and work life and not have that. We and we know as realtors they cross over way too much. All the and, time. And. <laughs> you know, having a little bit of separation there brings some value. So again, those telecommuters, those ones that work at home, just, you know, be aware of the, you know, be aware of it, you know, be aware that you can turn it off. You yeah. know, you would turn it off if you left the office and came home, do the same when you're leaving your at home office, when you're coming into the rest of your evening. So it's just, a, it's a learned skill to be honest with you. Absolutely. Life advice from Sean. For well, I did, I, well, listen, I did, I, I did the, when I was able, when we moved, moved to Keller Williams, actually it was the first time I actually had a full office at the office. Oh really? And I never, in all my companies before, because they were, ex, it was expensive to have an office and you had to, you know, you had to pay a lot of money for it. And I just wasn't going to, we had a nice office at home. And the moment I had an office and was able to literally leave at four o'clock, five, even if it was six o'clock, whatever, t I was able to leave work at work. I mean, yeah. And of course, you're still answering your phone and things like that. But I don't, I didn't have to go sit at a desk at the end of the hall at home while my kids asking what I'm doing, you know, while dinner's on the table. It's just, it was a, you, it was a very nice learned, uh, I had to learn something through that and it was yeah. valuable.
Yeah, I find myself more productive in an office for sure than um, than at home. Um, mm -hmm. So so yeah, I, I I think the opposite works for me. I if I'm at home, I just get distracted. Yeah, you know, I'm a squirrel. <laughs> I'm a squirrel. Yes, yeah. so I get distracted by everything. So yeah, when I when I am actually working in an office, I seem to focus a little bit better. Sure. <clears throat> By your love letters, me and Tiana talked a lot about this last week. We did. Um, and by your love letters, so mm -hmm. just a, just if, if you didn't watch last, le last week and you don't know what I'm talking about, these are not Valentines. Um, they're, they're, they're kind of like Valentines. No well, they're definitely advocating for themselves. Yeah, sure. so buyers writing these you know warm and fuzzy, gooey letters to the sellers about how much they love the home and how much they mm -hmm. want the home and all of these good things, which has always been, it's been like a, putting an emotional layer onto the real mm -hmm. estate transaction, which, you know, it has worked very well in the past. Sure. Um, yeah, we've benefited from it oh, before. Yeah. yeah. However, with all of these, um, you know, things, big changes going on and like all across the world of, of all, all types of situations, one of the things that has come about is buyer love letters could be discriminatory um, or, or open up um, yourself to liability, um, discrimination mm -hmm. on, on certain levels. So a lot of states have um, are saying goodbye to it. Oregon is outlawing it yeah. right. um, coming come January. And I'm sure that um, we got a message from our board of realtors mm -hmm. that they are advising us against it. So I'm sure that is something that we're going to be saying goodbye to. It's going to make a little bit of change in real estate. Yeah, it definitely could. I mean, it was a always a big part of my business. I mean, Again, it depends on the type of real estate market you're in. When you're up against a multiple offer scenario, which for a lot of realtors that have been in the business for just the last few years, that's all you've known. You haven't you haven't not been up against multiple offers. But so you used it before. It was just one of those things you pulled out every now and then, you know, yeah. it's because you needed it because it was a a popular home that you knew was going to have a few offers on it. So you wanted that emotional attachment between the buyer and the seller because rarely would they ever meet where rarely would they have a conversation so this gave the buyer an ability to have a conversation with the seller um and so it's a and and the sad thing is is that so few realtors utilize them that it's it's kind of sucks to see it go away yeah because it's you know it's been it's not it's not benefiting those that don't that don't use it or maybe well actually it would be benefiting those agents that don't utilize the the tactic and right. I say that tactic in a nice way, it's just because it's an, as a realtor, our job is to give our buyers any possible leg up. Yeah. And so, um, but, and we'll just learn how to be better agents and learn how to make sure we have great relationships with the agents on the other side of our transactions to get those offers accepted. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It is going to be sad because it does take the emotion and humanity mm -hmm. out of it. But when you do take mm -hmm. that, you get the ability now to be very transactional and sure. there's no discriminatory practices and that's what we're trying to avoid, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, and the last time I used it, it actually wasn't even me that, that encouraged it. My buyer wrote the letter. Yeah. They, oh, yeah. they said okay. they wrote it. They said they didn't even say, Sean, should we? They're like here. And it had a photo of them and their kids and their dog and, and, and they wrote it. And because okay. they wanted that connection with the buyer, with or with the seller. That's uh, that is something that yeah we're 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 putting behind us sure. and um, we're probably not going to see so much of in well we're seeing all the you know so many different changes in the way that we're just in a different world now we're in a more li obviously continuously litigious society oh and yeah so it's just everything everything has uh you know everything has a little bit of something attached to it that people want to see go away so absolutely that's what we deal with. Um, so another thing, we are probably going to be very mournful about this one, but we're pretty much basically saying goodbye to single family homes under 300,000. Yeah. yeah. You, you find one every now and then. And our average sales price in our office last month was $475,000. Yeah. I mean, and that's, you know, and that's doing quite a few transactions. So it's running the gamut of, of price points and... So we're going to see that it just, we're going to continue to see. We don't, the people that are waiting for that market crash, um, if that was one of our topics, that I'm is, sorry. That, yeah, we're going to talk yeah, about that Yeah, but it's later. basically, <laughs> this will tie into that. <laughs> yeah. So it's, don't wait around for it because we're not going to see those price points drop. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. Even with interest rates increasing, 
sorry, it's going to affect some buyers buying power, but that's not going to make a seller reduce their price right? Uh, because there'll be a buyer right behind it that will come in and pay that price. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's one thing I, I think as well, like with the, um, you know, with the rates increasing, I don't think mm -hmm. that's going to cause, so I, I've heard people say, oh, it's going to cause a market crash. No, it's no. going to maybe cause a slowdown. Sure. It's going maybe. to eliminate some of the buyers, but we're so mm -hmm. plentiful right now on buyers that yeah. we have, you know, plenty of time to, uh, are plenty of buyers out there to mm -hmm. work it out. It, it's not going to cause anything to crash. It's just going to cause things to not go so yeah. quickly. Well, it is. That, those are the conversations. It's going back. I tell a lot of our agents that you're, we're going to get back to where the first time home buyer is going to be buying condos and townhouses. That was, you know, when I started back in the day, it was, that's what I sold my friends, my, you know, that people were buying their first right. homes. I sold them two bedroom condos. You know, I sold them a, ta a two or three bedroom townhouse. And that was that first level, that first entry level into owning real estate and, yeah. and creating wealth for themselves. And, and it's gotten, it's gotten almost a stigma to it where, a condo is a rental, you know, unless it's a high rise, then it's fancy, but a condo is a rental property or that's beneath me. I want a single family home. And so as agents, we have to get better at, at, uh, at, uh, educating our clients that look, you got to start somewhere. Yeah. So here's where you got to get, you want to buy that single family home, buy a condo now. And as we're seeing financing become much more readily available, mm -hmm. townhouses are still a strong opportunity. So yes, they are. just have to have those conversations for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah, now condos and townhouses are in the 300s. So yeah, we're, exactly. We're, you know, and we're well, this thing is still nice condos are, I mean, well, crazy. I mean, nice, con I mean, they're up in the twos, you know, in the, in the two, 220, 250, 260 range, but that's still a nice condo and a nice community and, and a nice home. And it's, a, and they're going up in price too. So I had a one bedroom condo in Summerlin recently mm -hmm. sell 250. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's Summerlin, sure. so it's what are you going to do? Yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? Pay to, pay to play. Pay to play. <laughs> That's the prices. So um, there are a lot of people, um, a lot of people that are saying goodbye to California taxes because they're coming here. They are. And yeah. they're, they're coming, well, they're coming everywhere. So I talk to they realtors are. in lots of different states right. and they're like, no, they're coming here. They're coming everywhere. They yeah. are spreading everywhere but California. So they're ditching those taxes. And uh, yeah, they're definitely doing that. I mean, they're both Florida and Arizona, I think actually were ahead of us in yeah. terms of, uh, of uh, in migration last year, this, this past year. Uh, but yeah, I mean, ta not only uh, property taxes, but income taxes and everything else. So right, it's stacking up. And now they've got the freedom to go places and do yeah. things and they're like we're out yeah we're out of here and and it's because they're able to re, uh, work remotely and right. in many cases that's what's driving that mm -hmm. i'm wondering what's going to happen if their their employers say hey you got to come back to work are they all going to leave like <laughs> I, I mean i think that it just really depends on the strength of the job i mean yeah. it has to be something that makes them want to stay or have to stay if there's, I mean, there's so many opportunities arising here in Vegas and yes. so many, we're not just the casino industry anymore. Oh, yeah. You know, it is so diverse. So many people are taking their companies and moving them here. So they're not even having to answer to a, a business owner because they're the business owner and they're moving it here for those benefits. So we're going to continue to see that. And, um, I mean, I think there's people that are taking early retirements to move out because it makes financial sense. There's a lot of opportunities inside of it. So it's, uh, it's just, yeah, say they're saying bye to all that stuff. I mean, it's, I, look, I, we all love going to California. Hey, <laughs> hey, yeah. Go I, visit I the it. beach. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, yes. and, it's, and we it's go there, we're weekend. like, man, we could live here. And then you just think about everything and that it, it's like, no. Yeah, no, just remember no, how that yeah. happened. Don't bring that tax stuff here. Yeah. We don't want yeah, it. We don't exactly want it. Right. No, please. Um, right. Yeah, let's let's not uh, let's not follow suit on that. Um, we are saying goodbye uh, finally to the rental moratorium. Yeah. 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 So, um, so that is, a, you know, it's, it's definitely not a good thing on all levels. You know, for some people, that's creating um, some issues for them and in, in their home, and they, you know, their landlords are actually telling them they got they have to go now, and mm -hmm. um, that's uh, that's that's definitely 
sad. Mm -hmm. And um, on, on some levels, that rental moratorium is part of what drove up rent prices and made it almost impossible to get into a rental right now unless you're like qualified to buy a home. And at that point, why would you get a rental? But um, yeah. but yeah, so that's one thing we're saying goodbye to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it served its purpose. And it did. It helped, it helped, you know, and some people were in it a did. position when it ended and some people had a harder time. Yeah. yeah. Right. But well, it's tough because not all the investors that own rental properties are, you know, are industrial investors. You know, right. they're mom and pops that own one and two rental properties, and it made it tough. Oh, you yeah. Know, it really did. And um, so it's, and, it, and it, again, things come and go, and it's something that has to go. We, we, want to, we want to be sympathetic and empathetic to those that were being affected by, you know, COVID during this time, and that was their rental property. And it's like people weren't wanting to be empathetic to the homeowner that oh. was not able to pay their mortgage, right. you know, or not able or having to dip into savings to pay their mortgage or whatever it was, you know, yeah. and it was, and it was a, it was definitely a tough period in, in, in time. So Absolutely. I think it's good that that's going away and it's, and it is what is, like you said, it did, it's driven up rentals to ridiculous, ridiculous price points price ridiculous. Point. and it's scared people from renting again, you know, oh. for being owners or I'm sorry, from owners renting their properties out. They've said, I'm done, I'm out and they've sold their home. So fewer rentals out there yeah. in this rental market inventory as well. shortage. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So and, it's driven a lot of things. Yeah. And criteria. I mean, gosh, you have to have a 620, 650 yeah. to get mm -hmm. into a rental. And I, it's just the, the whole thing that I'm like, what, what happens to the people that don't have those scores? Yeah. Like that, it's just, it's really, it, it's changed things a lot. It served its purpose while mm -hmm. it was here. It was, it was helpful, but yeah. <clears throat> Okay. Just the economy basics. You can't live for free anywhere. Nothing is free. It's yeah. a cost to someone, somewhere, somehow. Well, yeah, you're seeing rentals with multiple offers, obviously multiple applications, but then offering higher rent prices, uh, you know, to get the property. Or it's huge a, deposits. Or huge, or huge paying, deposits. Paying months that up was front. crazy. Yeah. 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 I'm like, uh, if you have 12 grand to put on a deposit <laughs> for a rental, you could buy yeah. a house, yes, right? I, I knew somebody just put down a $15,000 deposit on a yeah. rental. And I was like, what? what? Why are you not purchasing a home? You have yeah. the credit score. Like, yeah. this is insane. And he's like, well, I don't know if I'm going to stay here for, sure. for long. And I'm like, yeah, who so cares? Yeah. Like, the value's doing good. You know, mm -hmm. the market's doing really good. Like, that rental's not going to serve you um, <laughs> much uh, purpose in the end. But No, but that'll, be, that'll definitely be, I think it's one of those things that has to go. And yeah. it's just good that it's finally out the door. Yeah, and forbearance. We are saying goodbye mm -hmm. to that. Um, forbearance is there's still a little trickling of it around, but mm -hmm. it's pretty much done. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and that is again served a purpose while it was here. Um, the backlash of forbearance because there's definitely a negative side to everything is um, what I've been seeing a lot of is sellers that were in forbearance that didn't really realize that like those payments didn't disappear. Nope. Nope. They went somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so now they're selling their homes and yeah. they were in forbearance for the past year. Mm -hmm. And now they have this crazy amount on their principal that they did not expect. And you know, the mm -hmm. way interest um, snowballs and yeah, all of that sure. good stuff, the amount's a lot higher than the amount of payments mm -hmm. they missed. So um, that is a, the good thing about it is it, so far I haven't seen anybody, um, good thing, blessed, thank you, um, have not seen anybody in a hardship where the numbers yeah. won't work out, where they oh, would yeah. then have to sh uh, short sell. Everybody has equity. Sure. That's right. great. But they're getting a, a, a big chunk of that return mm -hmm. that um, less than what they have expected. Yeah. Right. That happened to a few sellers that I've been working with, and mm -hmm. they just are not in a position to make the kind of money that they want. They thought they would in a seller's mm -hmm. market, but the forbearance was the uh, their yeah. Achilles tendon. So. Yeah. And it was, it's again, like you said, served its purpose and it was valuable. That was a couple of things. It was the, that's what people thought was going to drive the crash mm -hmm. because they thought it was going to drive foreclosures. Yeah. And again, right. the fact is, is people have equity in their homes. They're just so so few people that don't have the equity in their homes to be able to sell right. and and cover it and put money in their pockets. The, um, the other side of it is people in forbearance that when they sell, if they can close and, and, and pay off that back, um, it hasn't affected their credit negatively. Yeah. It hasn't, they actually, if they're going in and buying a Fannie or Freddie backed uh, mortgage conventionally, 
they qualify. Yeah. And they can they can sell their home that was they have not made a payment on the last year and buy a new property. Yeah, and that's so, almost unheard of. Yeah, yeah, and I think that there's a lot of people. There's I mean, we're our forbearance numbers are so far down now. And at the same point, again, as realtors having those conversations with sellers and, and homeowners and finding out, hey, did you take on the forbearance? Yeah. Because you can still sell, clear that out. Because some banks will tack it back on, but some banks will call it call it due when mm -hmm. you come out of forbearance. They'll right. want that money then, mm. and that's selling right then and there, obviously. So there's different opportunities, but it's, again, just more reasons to have conversations with your clients and know where they're at and making sure that they feel comfortable speaking to you about it. Right. I had a couple instances where the clients thought like, oh, I never have to bring that up to the realtor. Yeah. Then we get the payoff and they're like, those numbers aren't what I expected. And I'm like, well, are we missing something? Yeah. We, we, you never mentioned this to me. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's kind of no. a big factor. That yeah. happened to me and it was, I didn't find out until we were literally in a mortgage per, a purchase on, yeah. an, on, a, on the next property. Their home was, and he had, he just didn't tell me. Yeah. So and it was one of those things where you have to, we have to ask a few more questions. Ask a few more consult. questions and be okay <laughs> to tell your realtors we're not going yes. to like penalize you for anything. Yeah. We just no, need to know all the facts. We want to help you. We want to navigate with you. Let yeah. you know what your well, options are. Like you said it doesn't are. show up on credit. So a mortgage company is not going to see it. They're not going to see it until they pull the, the payoff demand for the mortgage. Right. So there's a lot of little factors in there. So help us out. Yeah, help us out. <laughs> we don't like surprises. Yeah, no surprises. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, and, and with that, I, I think we're pretty much, I mean, we're not going to ever say goodbye completely to foreclosures, but mm -hmm. like a foreclosure market that everybody thought I, I've had, you know, a few weeks ago, someone called me and they say, hey, send me a list of foreclosures. And I was like, hmm. See, now that's what I'd like to say goodbye to. Yeah. <laughs> send me a list of foreclosures. The yes, the, the calls. calls. The, I would, I would prefer it. people not call and say, hey, I want the best deal that nobody else in town mm -hmm. will know about. It's yeah. a secret. Yeah. yeah so you yeah, it's list like of foreclosures. Yeah. Uh, you send them the list of homes, you know, based all their criteria, everything's there. I never eliminate foreclosures from that list never, unless ever. they tell me to. No. Mm -hmm. um, so you send them the list and then they're like, you know, all these homes don't look like they're a good price. I'm okay with the fixer up or send me a foreclosure. And I'm like, the foreclosure, if there was one, it'd be it'd there. Be there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, last, last I looked a few weeks ago, someone wanted just a list of foreclosures, no price limits, nothing. Mm -hmm. There were eight. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, um, yeah, that's Such not happening. Such a small percentage. It's, not happening. I, I still yeah. have the list of, of notices of default, notices of sales at, uh, emailed to me every day. And they're like at the most, there'll be... 10, you know, and that's a note. And so maybe someone stopped making their payments and they'll, again, they still have equity. So it's, they'll still sell their home more than likely before it gets foreclosed on. And if it does, it's probably a strategic foreclosure of some sorts that right. the seller knew that they were, that's what they mm -hmm. were going to do for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, I think that it's just, again, it's just not going to be part of this real estate market anytime soon. Yeah. Unless they've been living in a cave, I mm -hmm. think every homeowner pretty much knows they have equity by, you yeah. know, by now it's, right. it's everywhere. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's everywhere. And if, and if it's not, if they don't like watch the news, social media, anything, they get the phone calls from those people <laughs> that are calling like, oh my gosh. Yes. And, and you get that, do you get those clients that are like, hey, they want to buy my house really bad. Mm -hmm. They like, I don't know what it is about this house, but they're in love with it. And I'm like, no, they're in love with any house yeah. that yeah. anybody yeah. will say yes to. They don't right. even know what your house looks like. I promise you. Exactly. Like it's not, yeah, those are random cold calls. Can we say goodbye to them? <laughs> yes. Let's yes. add those to the wish list. <laughs> Please go I, away. Uh, that's never gonna happen. Yeah, but, but there's like regulation, and they're like they're exempt. How does this work? Like I don't know. Yeah. Like I know I can't like cold call people right. if they tell me not to call anymore. Mm -hmm. But these people call me 20 times a day, along with auto warranty <laughs> and my health insurance or whatever. Like stop calling me. Yeah. Yeah. Phone calls are unless you're calling for real estate, then yeah. keep calling. Yeah. Or the fake IRS. Those are fun. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> So let's say goodbye um, to the hopes of a market crash. I don't think we're seeing this in 2022, 2021. People were hopeful all through the year. Even 2020. Yeah. Oh, they, gosh, 2020. They were like, sure. I, yeah. I was believing it for like two yeah. weeks in 2020. I was like, it's going to happen. Oh, my gosh. It's like it's here. No, it didn't happen. So, no. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't. Yeah. I mean, any, I, I don't see it. It's just not going to happen. I don't see it. I still see a lot of investors in the market. Mm -hmm. I still see a lot of deals happening. We're so unbalanced right mm -hmm. now. I yeah. think that we'd have to get 
yeah. balance to even consider some a dip. Well, for sure. And I think what happened was the last with the market crash that happened in you know oh eight oh nine. The fact is, is that happened in the in the world in the land of social media, where you know we where there if there were any previous when you had previous market crashes, you know going back to the the early mid eighties things like that. There was all you had was your three news outlets. That was it. So yeah. it wasn't as it was stories, but it, you didn't have the conspiracy theories around it. So now everybody is just waiting. They think because everybody knows real estate is now on the tip of everybody's tongue. It's on the top of everybody's mind, no matter who they are. Yeah. And so everybody has an opinion and everybody has a conspiracy theory and everybody thinks this is what's going to happen because they lived through it before. You have to allow the real estate market to do what it's gonna do. You can't, good job, good luck predicting it. Yeah. It's just what it is. And right now there are no signals, there are no signs that will show that this market is going to crash in any way. Absolutely. And and the thing is too with that if the market if the market did crash, like just say like something crazy happened, the market mm -hmm. crashes tomorrow. I mean like a pandemic or oh, it, yeah, that define crazy. Define crazy. Yeah. Define crazy. <laughs> something crazy. <-er. laughs> oh my gosh, what would it take? I don't know. The like, ocean on fire. That's alien invasion. Yeah. Alien invasion. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever it would be. <laughs> okay. If that did there are so many people on the sidelines waiting for this this crash. Yeah. Prepared, they got the money, they're ready to jump on it. It's not gonna really crash because those people are gonna get boosted right back up. It's sure. not. Well, it's not going have, to people crash. People have equity, and they have. Yeah. That's what they didn't have before. They had. They had no equity. They had a mortgage that. Uh, had a payment on it that was ridiculous because of the way their mortgage was. Their created. second mortgages their se payments. Yeah, their first yeah. and seconds. Their balloon. You know, all these adjustable rates and Ugh. just none of that is a factor Those are all these bad words. days. I know they are. <laughs> well, they still are still out there, but they're yeah. done strategically these days, where people still have equity in their properties and everything else. So I'm not trying to be blind to uh, possibilities. It could happen. Anything could happen. At the same happen. point, there's just, no, there, there's just no indicators. There's right. no, there's nobody out there saying, you know, there's no financial indicators that could draw, could really create that at this point. So just stop waiting. Yeah. Just stop. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Stop waiting for it. Yeah, most definitely. Um, the, uh, so another thing that we are saying goodbye to, this is kind of in the real estate realm but um 90 hour pre-licensing <laughs> they figured that we need more than 90 hours training apparently to become realtors <laughs> not a, <laughs> I don't, you know what look good thing bad thing i don't you know we all it all took us 90 hours to, to right? get our license right. to get our license that that, that yeah. let's just be honest though that didn't train us right no, no. I, no. I learned nothing it's, that i really needed mm -hmm. to um, apply in the in, in the field in licensing in pre licensing school sure. except for I learned how to stay out of trouble that was good yeah yeah no it had its benefits it got us here I've definitely seen the value in the CE and the post licensing versus real estate school mm -hmm. that's really where you get your knowledge and nothing's better than real world experience but I do like that they upped the education across the board for real estate. You yep. know, it's a big investment. You're here on an advisory level to help people and you should be well versed in yeah. this subject, right? Yeah. Well, we're, we're, we take on a very big deal of, um, things from our clients. You know, sure. I, I mean, we, we take on a big deal of responsibility. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with the, you know, the biggest purchase in most people's lives. So when you really look at the grand scheme of things, 90 mm -hmm. hours doesn't seem like much and even 120, which it is now still yeah. isn't much. I just don't see oh, it. I, don't see, I that. don't see it being a hurdle of any kind. No. It's just, they wanted to increase it and they've increased our continuing education. Mm -hmm. Yes. They think we need a handful more out. And again, fair enough. I feel that there's not enough companies out there educating their agents to the level that others do. Yeah. Um, so we must rely on making sure that they're getting their education somewhere. So. Exactly. Yes. We're up to, um, we, we said goodbye to 24 hour continuing education yes. for licensed realtors. We're up to 36 now. 36 every two years. So, yes. Which really isn't that much. We just are procrastinating. <laughs> They've That's added all there is risk to management yes. to it. But um, I'm wondering when we're going to get to like emotional counselor. <laughs> we we should. Get, we should get those CE credits so right. we can help our, our clients mm -hmm. navigate their emotions during these uh, 
purchases and sales. Right? Oh my gosh. I have seen some people lose their heads where I'm like, do I know this person? <laughs> like, what is happening here? Yeah. But yes, real estate is extremely emotional. It mm -hmm. is. So uh, that is one thing that I learned um, early on the hard way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Keller Williams made a huge announcement about mm -hmm. a month ago and yeah. we are now saying goodbye to paying for real estate school. Yeah. Yep. That is Jeez. not really a... Uh, it, it's not mandatory anymore, anymore because <laughs> we have the, um, it's Kaplan. It's, it's yeah, we, uh, Keller Williams on a national level partnered with Kaplan, which is a national educator. Uh, they've had a real estate school in all 50 states for years. And so Keller Williams, actually the reason this was created was for the, to create more diversity inside of our industry. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted to have one less hurdle and barrier for entry into this industry okay. um, because we do feel that this is an amazing industry. We talk about we want fewer people selling real estate and the fact is, is it's not going to stop. So let's facilitate, you know, yeah. so we've partnered with it. And, and if and if a real estate office uh, is participating in the program as our offices are, then yes, basically anybody has access to free real estate school. Yes. Uh, literally no cost. And Which is um, amazing. And they even send their books. That, they I was, do. I was yeah. shocked. Not about only that. do you get a PDF of yeah. all the materials, you get a full box of the materials. You get study guides. You get you get you know test prep. You get everything to ready you for the exam. And and it's just that one less hurdle. Look, it doesn't mean that real estate is free to get into. No. It's there are st you're still going to have a few a couple of thousand few thousand dollars in expenses, but it's just that one less hurdle to get moving forward. And so yeah, anybody here can uh, sign up anybody through what we call K score, Kel Keller Williams School of Real Estate in all 50 states. Yeah. And so it's uh, so reach out to your nearest Keller Williams agent. Our office has over 330 people registered at this time. Yes. It, and it's and it's been around for not, like you said, just about a month. Just so. about a month. It's, right. It, it's very recent. And yes, if any of you guys are thinking of a career mm -hmm. change, you want yeah. to get into real estate, you can contact any of us and yeah. we can get you we signed can. up and sure. started. Um, so yeah, that that's amazing. That's, that's a good amazing. thing to say I'm goodbye to. I'm actually going through the program and getting licensed in another state just so go. I can oh. have yeah. firsthand knowledge on what it's like. Yeah. So yeah, people... we got a lot of agents that are doing that. They're oh, wow. coming to us and saying, "I'd like to get licensed here, here, here. Let's do it." You wow. know, so a yeah. lot of opportunity inside of that as well. Yeah, there's a there's a system Keller Williams has worked out too, where you can hold your license in other states, and, yeah. and there's that there. So uh, yeah. our company <laughs> has everything. You it got sure problems, does. we it got is. you covered. And it's keeps adding. One. Yeah, and they and keep on adding. One. It is it is a, uh, a a goodie bag of everything for sure. So. Um, it's not specifically real estate related, but come on now, realtors, we're feeling this. We have to say goodbye to low gas prices. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I did that a little while ago, but. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. you did, but I didn't. I spent a lot of time driving yeah. and yeah. filling up. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, part of our, our job requires us to drive all around town mm -hmm. all around i have been guilty of putting 120 to 140 miles in a single day True. in town just working mm -hmm. so it is easy easy yeah. easy, easy every week and we'll yeah. see where it goes i remember uh, 10 years ago there was another time where gas prices were for quite a while at four plus oh, you know, yeah. dollars again and so again, like everything, it, it fluctuates. And so, but it is frustrating. It I mean, is frustrating. It's, it's tough when you've been, when it was down to, you know, in the low, low two or below $2 for a while. Yeah. And now it's up, but you know, the good old days. Keep, keep that Costco card for those, for those of us that don't own Teslas. I, <laughs> <laughs> keep that Costco card because it saves money. Yeah, it, it does. I love Costco and yeah. Sam's gas prices. Gotta have, yeah. For sure. So rest in peace mm -hmm. for now, low gas prices. Um, so another thing that we are saying goodbye to, um, uh, it's a big announcement by a lot of, of the big real estate websites, uh, Redfin, um, Trulia, Zillow, um, Z actually Zillow and, um, Redfin had already removed them, realtor.com said they're, they're removing them, but crime data, crime data is going away. Mm. Um, they are, they, they no longer want to post it on these real estate websites. 
Sure. And so for people that don't know what crime data is, that's basically where you, it has a link that tells you like the crime in the neighborhood. So that's something that has to be buyers due diligence. Um, your mm -hmm. realtor cannot advise you on that. Please don't ask us to, because we are not allowed to. Um, it is something that somebody has to do their own research. And it's mm -hmm. basically because like the, when it comes down to crime and things like that, I mean, every, everywhere has crime. Yeah, like, exactly. Everywhere. Right. No matter okay. what. Move me into a neighborhood with no crime. Sure. When you find it, tell me to. <laughs> right. Like there's no, mm -hmm. there's no such thing. Hopefully it's a $150,000 four bedroom in Summerlin. Cool. <laughs> yes. That's probably where it is. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's where that's, there's that's no where, crime. Yeah. That's yeah. the house that has no crime. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's where that right. Because yes. that is the unicorn that isn't real. <laughs> yeah. Um, exactly. So yeah, just, um, when it, yeah, just go to your local law enforcement websites and do your re research anyway. If you're going to rely on on random third party sites that, you know, what's the point? You know, yeah. this, you got to do your homework, be comfortable. Like you said, be knowing that there's going to be crime everywhere. You can live in the greatest neighborhoods ever. It doesn't make any difference. People will find a way that's they're going to attack those as well. So it just. Be diligent, and that's all yeah. you can do. Right. And if they're not attacking your house, they're going to steal your information <laughs> on cyber somewhere. Right. 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 There's <laughs> the optimism, sure. Trish. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if they're not being attacked and yeah. violated in, in person, person, definitely online. Yeah. That's how this so get you. You're yeah. not exempt. I'm sorry. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> is going to be a victim of crime. <laughs> yeah. I, it, it just deal with it. Yeah, but even using the crime data on these sites, I never thought was beneficial. I always yeah. advise my buyers drive there at night yeah. go to the grocery store eat in the exactly. neighborhood this is where you're going to be to right talk to the want. neighbors yeah. you're moving in start mm -hmm. to make yourself feel like hey if i came home every day what would this look mm -hmm. like for me right and then you'll know and it's so specific like i mean some people yes. would be like oh this is a horrible neighborhood because my neighbor has a dog and some people are like i love that <laughs> dog what a great neighborhood the neighbor yeah. has a dog you know like it's so right. it, it's so specific to the person you have to do your own due diligence and your own research when right. it comes and down the information to it. is out there so you can yeah. look up if you want to know the numbers for crime and what kind of things are happening in that neighborhood is it you know teenagers breaking into cars or are there shootings you know yeah. you have to do your research and figure out what you're comfortable with mm -hmm. and what your standards are period and yeah. that's for anything when it comes to the home buying yeah, process sure. Yeah. And then even like in neighborhoods that like don't have, you know, they don't have like a lot of big activities or whatever. You always have that one random person like kills this whole family, right? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the optimism. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> so we're going to push optimism yeah, to rest we'll this year. We'll put those to rest as well. How about that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it happens, right? Hey, you watch does. the news, it happens. There's craziness. And it's like the neighbors are like, well, you're such but a great back guy. To the crazy uncle. Huh? Yeah. It's crazy uncle. <laughs> He was such a great guy. We all thought he was great. And then he does this, you know, so you never, you can't predict it. It's not, it's not, you, know, oh, yeah. you can look up Love all the it. crime data in the world. It's not <laughs> happening. Um, <laughs> Sentry lock key cards. Um, so a lot of the public's not going to know what this even means. But, no, no. Um, no, they don't care. Most I, agents don't even know. <laughs> so that's okay. Right. So I just, yeah, to fill you in, we have these little, like, uh, they look like credit cards mm -hmm. that, that open lock boxes. But, like, our phones could do it. Our, our, we could do it on our phones with, like, Face ID mm -hmm. on our little um, hey, realtor app. The art, though. They had the chip before your they debit did. card had the that's chip. True. They were. Yeah. They were ahead of things, yeah. So um, they took those cards away from us. I assume they never said a reason why, but I think like, you know, maybe some people were sharing them and doing things they weren't supposed to oh, do okay. with them. Yeah. Hopefully they weren't giving them to their clients. But <laughs> that would have been reckless, but who yeah. knows, but we don't even have the access anymore. Don't even so, have it anymore. Nope. So bye-bye. Those, those went away and I couldn't find now mine. It's a they were a format. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which it's, is crazy because I actually used to use the card occasionally, especially mm -hmm. like um, in Anthem mm -hmm. when it was oh, yeah. first going up, and you couldn't get get a Bluetooth service. service. I used it at Mount Charleston once. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was showing oh, right. cabins up there with no service, and I couldn't access the Bluetooth on my lock. Exactly, but my the card worked, so it was right. one of those things. Yeah, that is that was its benefit. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, every time that I needed it, I didn't have it with me <laughs> and had no clue where it was at. So that never worked out for me, and I'd have 
have to call their customer service number and you know go yeah. through that whole no, thing. No, I carried the card with me in Did my you? wallet like a credit card. The only thing was you had to um, plug it in and charge it each day. Yeah, you like, yeah. update, yeah. update yeah. it. Or well, you for could that. make a phone call to. Right, but, it was but that's only always to, what I did for the was, day. And it was only up to a certain amount of times, and then you had to plug it in. Oh, yeah, we're, yeah. Going, we're, we're, we're going off on a tangent. But yeah, yeah. That nobody knows about. Everybody's no like, what like, are they talking, talking about? about? Yeah. Most people didn't even know where their cards were. <laughs> our I association. My, I got my hundred bucks back. Did you? Right. Yeah, they offered us a not. credit. I was so mad. I tore my house apart. Was like, where did I put that thing? I no, for know. years I knew exactly where it was, mm -hmm. and then uh, I ended up moving, and now I'm just like, mm, never gonna find it. That's yeah, fun. that was an expensive hundred dollar card that <laughs> I will probably find five years from now. Probably. So. Ah, memorabilia. Yes. Memorabilia. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll frame it. Much um, like the area codes. Areas. <laughs> that's our next one. We, are, we had to say goodbye this year to MLS areas. So Tiana and I, I, I mean, I've been in seven years. Tiana, you've been in how many years? Five. Five mm -hmm. years. Six. So I yeah. don't know. Just right after you. Right. So, so like, I never used this whole areas thing. It was like a section of our MLS, mm -hmm. had a whole bunch of numbers. Every once in a while, someone would call me and be like, I want area 803. And I'd be like, what are you talking about? Like, oh, okay, well, like let Sandy me. Valley. Sorry. Okay, well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just See, throwing I a number out there. See, <laughs> I have no clue. I, I thought you were a but no. you know. Yeah. I, I do. I'm so, telling you. Yeah, right, I'm a Vegas. Girl, so I'm 301. Like, 301. 202. Was, was out, <laughs> that's Central Vegas. That I, is crazy. I know where they all are. Yeah, I had it's no funny. idea. I never used them, but some realtors well, the have been around the, for yeah, a while. The, the, the city yeah. was broken up into these sections, and they were. They were the most weirded, cut it out, cut out sections. But it was just what we searched by, so it's funny they went away, and so now we just draw out those same sections in a map. Right. Map, well, so. yeah, they were basically so we could search specific areas, areas town, and then yeah. when they moved to the matrix system, mm -hmm. it gave the custom map mm -hmm. thing, and it, those, especially for new agents, made the area codes obsolete because yeah. now you could just draw a custom area and search yeah. that, or a zip code, or overlap. Which is zip more codes. efficient because if you were looking at an area that overlapped and you put pit two MLS areas, you would get spots that you didn't want anyway. So it definitely is for the best. Yeah. Just, there's some old school aspects to it that. Yeah, and there, there real, were some. A little nostalgic for it. Yeah. yeah. And there were some old school realtors that were outraged. Like yeah, there were some people little... that were really, really upset yeah, well, that they took this away. And we had a countdown on our MLS login. It was a big deal. It was like for six or eight months or something. I know. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God. Like for I the next like... two years, be advised. <laughs> yeah. We're not doing this again. Be ready. Learn how to use the map function. Yes. I was so like, funny. when is this countdown going away? Why and is it still there? they made you look at it for every, like every time you, you log in. You had to acknowledge in. it. Okay, I know. Yes, I know this is happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. It says a lot about us, right? right. <laughs> Can we just edit yeah, this part? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, our final, this is our final goodbye, um, is a, a FHA loan limits. Um, they used to be 364 and mm -hmm. they are now 420. So mm -hmm. those got in raised. So we are saying goodbye to the 364 loan limits and we're saying goodbye to the 548 conventional loan limits yep. because those got... Boosted up to 647. It's huge. So yeah. what does this mean? Buyers have more buying power. Most definitely. Right. Yeah. So I'm not sad to see that go. No. That's I feel a, good to put yeah. that one to rest. Like, okay, sure. now let's give our buyers more buying power. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, a, I mean, a buyer can buy a conventional loan. I mean, you can buy down to 3% with a pretty average uh, credit score. So mm -hmm. you can buy a $640,000 house with... Less, little less than twenty thousand dollars down. That's pretty awesome. And That's awesome. and have market interest rates and everything else. And so, the buying power is huge. And yeah. so that really does give a lot of opportunity because. Look, that's where our prices are going. So we needed that flexibility for sure. Well, absolutely. And having... we, yeah, and if we can get sellers to accept FHA offers, there's benefits on that side too. So yep. Yeah. Well, <laughs> having loan limits that were below yeah. what like the average prices were going was for was struggle. was yeah. but definitely a struggle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, there were some um, creative things that we were doing to try mm -hmm. and help people who are having those limits to try and get into homes. Yeah. And so now we're going to have that flexibility. So maybe we help more people. Most yeah. definitely. More maybe. people, yeah. more buyers, more opportunity for everybody. For sure. So um, before we wrap up, just quick, I want let, what's a wish list of what like you would hope, like your top <laughs> thing you wish we were putting to rest, but we're probably not going to see that. 
Well, if you hadn't, if I hadn't made completely clear, I'm waiting for that balanced market. I wish that would come yeah. on in. Okay. Yeah. Oh. I would like to see that. Being able to negotiate again for a buyer would be yeah. awesome. Yeah. Most definitely. I mean, that's, if there's a big part of it that's hard, I mean, you know, running a real estate office, the focus is how do I get all of our agents into production and getting them out there working. And it's, it's not easy, you know, I mean, this business has never been easy. And it's even that much more of a struggle now when there's that many fewer homes. So yes, that's if I if we could definitely see sellers, you know, find a, find a time to sell. It's time to sell. You know, if you haven't if you've been hanging on to your house for a while, maybe it's time to sell. Maybe it's time to move on. You know, just to see a little bit more inventory. Um, you know, but uh, but you know, look, we've had, it's been a great real estate market, and really it people has. shouldn't be complaining either. So um, just, you know, keep positive thoughts going about the real estate market and don't focus on the negative so much. That would be the focus, I would say. Yeah. Absolutely. If I had my wish list, I would wish that Zillow would like wake up one day and decide to like get into insurance. <laughs> Real estate's not for me anymore. <laughs> Shut it down. I've had a good run. I've made some mistakes. I'm just yeah. going to refocus my attention to insurance. Yeah, sure. That would be awesome. That'll probably happen. Yeah. yeah. So, and yeah, I know I'm sure we'd all love to see whatever version of this pandemic we're in go away. Oh gosh, so please, let's say goodbye to COVID. Just make our life, yeah. our, all of our lives easier. So That, that would, that yeah. would. Navigating real estate with COVID has been, um, yeah. whoa, uh, fun. So uh, we, we are definitely put to the fire, right? Can you handle it? <laughs> yeah, exactly right. what an amazing learning opportunity mm -hmm. this entire experience has been. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so. most definitely. And the people that have come through at the other side are, are the ones that are, really making things happen in this industry. So it's been awesome to watch that side of it too. Yeah. Absolutely. Only the strong survive. We're yeah. going to have a good year in 2022. Oh, great year. Good it's year. Amazing. So yeah. let's look forward to it. Well, guys, thank you so much for being Got on the it. show today. And this was fun. This yes. was good. This is great. Putting all this uh, 2021 behind us. Happy New Year's to everybody out there. Yeah. Be safe. You know, take the Get, get an Uber. <laughs> there you go. Get an Uber, unless you're going to your living room. Um, <laughs> you know, that that's happening for some people like me. Um, but, uh, you know, if anybody wants to reach out to you guys to sign up for a real estate school, to yeah. talk about a new career, to talk about real estate, to buy their home, if that's in their New Year's resolution, how do they reach you guys? Tiana, how, how do people get in touch with you? Well, you can always reach me by my phone or text at 702-379-9948 or my email is 702-househunter at gmail.com. Awesome. Yeah, so um, if you're interested in what, uh, what real estate has to offer for you, maybe you're even at another real estate brokerage and maybe looking to get a little bit of a taste of all these awesome tools that Keller Williams has to offer. I'd love the opportunity to speak with you. Reach out to me directly, 702-592-4485. Uh, that number has been the same for about 30 years. So, wow. <laughs> so Before cell phones. Not, no, it's, <laughs> that's about when I got my first one. Crazily is about line. when I got my first one. Uh, and then lvmarion at gmail.com is uh, always an email you can reach me at too. So uh, yeah, reach on out. Was your first cell phone like a brick? No, it wasn't that crazy. It was a little Sony one. It was kind of cool. It was Don't lie. You it was when they started. I wasn't. I'm not that crazy. It hasn't been 40 years. You said 30 years. Like, it has. Well, I. Well, okay. So it's been like 27 ish or something. Oh, okay. Like that, so. All right. But I, it wasn't quite the brick. Believe you were it or not. Walking around with the brick was, and the beeper. No, it, I did have the beeper. <laughs> I had the beeper before I had the cell phone. So yeah, <laughs> did have the beeper. All right. Well, uh, if you guys need to get a hold of me, Trish Williams, uh, Trish Williams at kw.com. It's really easy. 702-308-2878. I answer my phone. I'm happy to answer questions. Look forward to talking to you guys. Um, let's get Sam real estate, real estate, New Year's resolutions going. Let's work out a plan. Let's talk about what your plans are for 2022 and work through them. So uh, look forward to seeing you guys. Please like, comment, share, tell your friends, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Guys. Bye.